Okay, yeah, we're still stuck. I don't know if this video is gonna be any good or not. People suggested it, but we'll see what it's like. Okay, this is a good start. I, I like it so far. Everything's looking good so far. Bioman's hippogriff is a joke. Okay. Okay, we've got like an eight minute intro here. This is almost as long as the one that I have for my stream. So let me go ahead and read some donations here before I get into it. Um, okay, I read those. Thank you guys again. Uh, I came back to Waffle and watch your stream at retail because of the upcoming Shara patch. I've waited decades since I started. It gives me a feeling of sadness. It simply wasn't the same. Yeah, obviously it's not going to be the same. I mean, the new patches are cool for a week or so, but then it just basically goes back to the same old, same old. You don't want a minor herb, all ores or flowers at once because it makes no sense, but looting many mobs at once makes sense. It's not about it making sense. It's about it's just super, super efficient right and i don't think that that like aoe looting i'm sorry but I, I i'm going to forego yes there is a little bit of contradiction there aoe looting is just too efficient like it, it's just too efficient i'd never want it taken out of the game but uh for mining and everything I'd, i would want that to stay the same um and also like i mean there, there are different ways you could look at it but like yeah i mean it's a bit contradictory but personally that's that's where i kind of draw the line because like obviously you can't have perfect continuity in a game that has like flying phoenixes dragons and fireballs uh you have any expectations to invite shadow priests to raid i will invite anyone to a raid if they're good at the game uh that's basically the way that i've always looked at it has me all just watch tips out new video on it uh could i get your opinion on it just let me look at it jesus christ boys are distress testing the login screen Yeah, that's kind of true. I mean, yeah, what? I would say so. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is, um, what do you call it? This is a 53-minute video. I, I can't watch a 53-minute video. Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Melderon, and I've played World of Warcraft for a very, very long time. Good. Even though I started in late vanilla and quit in Legion, okay. I've experienced the vast majority of WoW's evolution. I would like to share my opinions on why you should try Classic WoW when it launches. Okay. Yes, I know. By now, I'm willing to bet money you've watched many videos that compare aspects of retail and Classic WoW. Yes. These videos explore the core gameplay differences between the two versions of the game by primarily focusing on aspects like class identity, it does sound like McConnell, the actually. community, the leveling right. experience, and progression. And I'll be the first to say that these aspects are extremely important comparison points and are alone amazing reasons to try Classic. However, okay. one thing that I think gets overlooked often is the unique storytelling that exists in Vanilla WoW. In my opinion, this is perhaps the most important aspect of what makes Vanilla unique, primarily because most, if not all, of the aforementioned aspects were also easily apparent if you compare the Burning Crusade or even Wrath of the Lich King to the current iteration of the game. In no other expansion okay. does the story get introduced to the player in such a personal and subtle way than in Vanilla WoW. And, before we go further, I want to clarify that when I say story, I'm talking about the lore itself, the antagonists, the goals of your faction, and the lives of each and every NPC. I like there that. are three main okay. interconnected ways Vanilla does this. The first is by not making you, the player, the center of attention. There it is. The second is by providing the lore within the quest text and not in cutscenes and cinematics. Exactly. And finally, by subtly and slowly exposing... You know what the best part about it is now? They have the lore in the book that nobody fucking reads. Oh no, there's a cinematic on the website. So, oh no, it's in the book. Well, what about the quest? Player to the game's antagonist through the diverse too questing much. and dungeoning systems. Using these three mechanisms, the game developers were able to build the narrative without just pushing it in your face immediately. There it this, is. This, to me, is good game design and ultimately great storytelling. Obviously. Let's now explore the first point. You are but a cog in a great machine. Yeah, I prefer I know, this a to lot. To many of you, this may seem like a letdown. But, in my and many others' opinions, everyone having weapons of legendary power and artifacts it's of stupid. forbidden knowledge it's fucking is dumb. extremely immersion breaking. Yeah. In Vanilla WoW, when you saw someone have a rare mount or a legendary item, that guy was mark a that god. day in your calendar, take a screenshot, and yep. tell your friends you were in the presence yep. of a heroic player. 
There it is. It was amazing to not only see, but it also gave you something to aspire to, while Fuck also yes. making the world more unknown, more vast. Yes. Vanilla makes it unapologetically and abundantly clear that you are insignificant yep. when you log into the game for the first time. Nobody gives a fuck your about you. You're shabby. You're blatant. You die to wolves. And your abilities are average at best. This is not at in best. place to demean you as a player. No. It is in place for a very important reason. It relays to you that there is so much more out there, so much more to explore, so much to learn. That's right. In my opinion, it gives you something to look forward to. That's but right. most importantly, you not being the center of attention makes it apparent that the world moves on without you. That's right. If you will not take up your sword and begin your adventure, guess what? Someone else will. Well, that's the same in Legion. If you won't be the High Lord, everybody else already is. The story, therefore, is not dependent on your actions. You are not a Horde Warlord, nor are you a Grand Marshal in the Alliance forces. That's right. You are, at best, just a volunteer joining the local militia to assist your faction and aspire to be something greater. Just a piece of shit, but basically. Make no mistake. Big dumb you piece can of shit. Become something much greater. Just not the main protagonist. You can instead become a somewhat integral piece of a much larger puzzle. Yo, I just want to say something, one thing. Somebody said this in chat. Same fucking thing in Dark Souls. That's what I liked about the Dark Souls 1 story. It reminded me of Vanilla WoW. Like, I've never felt a game that had so many similarities to Vanilla WoW than Dark Souls 1. Like, it, it was actually, like, really, really surprising how, how similar the two, the two games were. And I put, like, 300 hours into Dark Souls 1. And, ultimately, take on the forces of evil that plague your world. But, and this is a big but, you cannot do it alone. A you see, boy. in Vanilla, in order to achieve greatness, you need to work well with the team. Whether that be 4, 9, 14, 19, or 39 other players. Yep. In this way, the richness of the world slowly unfolds around you and builds the MMORPG experience. And that community aspect so many of us are looking forward to experience once again. There it is. You start your adventure in Azeroth by completing lowly missions. Delivering a letter. Yeah, to you're a fucking trigger, idiot, basically. Clearing out some vermin from a mine. Hey. And slaughtering a few pesky boars that are eating up crops in a local farm. Slowly, as you prove your worth, you are awarded gear and are tasked with fighting more dangerous foes like the Defias Brotherhood and the Brutal yeah. Quillbore. I would agree with that. It is then you first okay. realize that there are other forces at work in Azeroth that exist on a continuum between good and evil. There is a lot yeah, of it's gray an adventure. area in Hollow Well. The Defias have some noble qualities and warranted reasons for their actions. The Quillbor want to protect their culture and their lands, even though there is some greater corruption that exists. Van Cleef did nothing wrong. I just realized something. I never put these two things together. I think that a reason why people think that Vanilla WoW and Burning Crusade and everything had so much better stories in them and people remember the stories so much more is the fact that you didn't have quest helpers. So in order to actually figure out what to do on the quest, you had to read it. So it basically forced you into reading the lore. Like it was a secondary thing, but you would be reading the quest to figure out where to go, right? Even if you didn't care about the lore, you would pick up on that just by having to read the quest to know what the hell to do with it. Like, I... That's actually insane. Like, all, all of these weird things... This is what I was saying before about how... How could Vanilla WoW have happened without it just being an accident? Like, I... I, I it, it's so... There are so many ways like that that are just so perfect. I can't believe that someone smart enough could actually do this intentionally. Like, I, I'll be completely honest. Like, I don't think that there's anybody smart enough in the entire world to create the game with that intentionally in mind. Like, that, it, it must have been an accident. Unbeknownst to them, this holds true for many of the forces you will interact with, like the right. Centaur and the Furlbogs. Yep. And with each new zone and each enemy you meet, 
you become entrenched in the living lore of the game. You have to be. But it's up to you to read the quest text. It's up to you to make the lore real. Cadgar isn't telling you why what you're doing is important or whether it's noble or not. That decision is entirely up to you. It isn't until later in the leveling process that you are fighting proponents of true evil, like agents of the Burning Legion or servants of the old gods. Fuck em. In this way, Vanilla extends the world and creates a diverse storyline. Think of Doesn't Vanilla as a good dungeon master. If you have never played a tabletop game, then you may not get this comparison. But when playing Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder, the dungeon master's job, if he or she is doing it properly, is to let the story unfold slowly to not overtly explain how each puzzle is completed, and to put you and your party in situations that require you to work together and think. To me, Vanilla is an excellent dungeon master that never shows his or her full hand. Unfortunately, this dungeon master analogy has become less applicable as well as evolved. The game, wow. in my opinion, now tells you everything you need to know before even providing an adventure to embark on. Holy shit. Let's cover point number two. God damn. The lore is in the text. If you've ever played the Burning Crusade, then you remember the moment you entered the Dark Portal. Honestly, it is a moment that I will never forget. Same, dude. What is the first Fucking thing you same. see when traveling through space and time and setting foot on another world? Think back. Yes, score. The first thing that I thought was, how long is this loading screen going to take? What the fuck? Everybody's going to be ahead of me. I'm never going to get 70 at this rate and scores of demons My computer was bad. World. Am I saying that this experience wasn't amazing and heart-stopping? No, not at all. I'm simply trying to point out the core differences between the storytelling styles. Right. You may also remember the epic cinematic that reintroduced us to a fan favorite, Illidan Stormrage. Now, if we compare both the cinematics for Vanilla and TBC, what do you notice right away aside from the cleaner and better graphics? Well, it's centered around players. Like, I'm going to say this right now. Like, if you think about it, like, the Vanilla WoW cinematic is centered around players. There's no, NP there's no like, named NPCs there. It's just around the actual players and the people that move the game forward. Now, obviously, that's transitioned into Illidan because Illidan's the main focus of the Burning Crusade. But a lot of the other cinematics and everything were focused on players and their accomplishments rather than the game as a whole. I need to take a piss. I'll be right back. Just a second. You're not prepared? Yeah, exactly. All right, sorry about that, boys. We're back. Yep, you guessed it. There is an antagonist in one and not in the other. There it is. You, as the player, know before you even buy the game who you will be fighting. In all fairness, this is what Mr. Pandaria and Battle for Azeroth did partially right. You don't know who the big bad is in either of those expansions from their cinematics. That is true. But Vanilla takes this a step further by yeah. also not revealing anything during most of the leveling process either. Yeah, that is, It's yeah. not until much later that the player is introduced to the forces okay. of Blackrock Mountain and Anixia. Moreover, wow. Anixia herself attempts to bring down the city of Stormwind from within. And Fucking you may be bitch. thinking, well, Melderon, these differences are just a product of expanding the game. Each expansion has to have a theme or reason behind it, right? Uh, yeah, I yes totally agree no. with you there. Expansions only cover small level ranges and are geographically inferior to the base game. But, in my opinion, storytelling can be done with a bit more grace and subtlety in these expansions. TBC and Wrath focused on raid encounters to drive the lore. While in Vanilla, the lore was spread evenly throughout the experience from multiple sources. In Vanilla, if you want to know why the Scarlet Crusade is so extreme, or why Tyrion Forging is standing in the middle of nowhere on the western shore of the Eastern yeah, Playlands, the you have to read the quest text to find out. And you have to read the if quest text to, to do the quest. Why you're going to Blackrock Mountain in the first place, you have to pay attention to attunement quests. Yep. There are many, many layers to the greater story of Classic WoW. Each NPC, dungeon and raid have their own and it's up to you to explore each of them also repeatable quests were not available in vanilla so when you completed quests let's say the first time you completed all of the jintha lore quests in the hinterlands you actually feel like you made a difference in the world and stopped a real threat to your faction now i never really felt that way like i i don't think that's really had 
Blizzards try different ways of like feeling like making the player feel like they have an impact on the world. I think the best times that Blizzard has ever done that is probably in Isle of Quel'Donis and the Molten Front. Because and then also uh, there were a few times where like after a guild killed Deathwing or a guild uh, killed the Lich King, you would have like a monument in uh, Dalaran. So there would actually be impacts that players could have on the world, which was really cool. But for the most part, I never really gave a fuck whenever I completed the quest. I didn't feel like I did anything magical or really important. It's just that I was done with the quest uh so i i personally don't really i don't strongly agree with this but i, I can see what he's saying nowadays with dailies and world quests the impact of completing the quest is completely lost as you fight the AQ's same another NPC example. day in and day out sometimes in vanilla when you completed the quest that page of the book was turned this establishes yep. a sense of permanence and completion into the gameplay that is akin to finishing a chapter of a good book the first two points I've given you can be summated graphically. If you are like me, you like plots. So let's imagine a two-dimensional plane with two axes. On the bottom, or x-axis, we have time. And on the y, or left axis, the vertical one, we have storytelling mode. On the bottom of the y-axis, we have completely player and world-associated storytelling. Okay. And on the top of this axis, we have completely established lore-associated storytelling. An established lore example would be something like Illidan Storm Rage or Arthas Menethil. What would be a what would be Above example? the plot itself Player. or each expansion, going from left to right through time. In Vanilla Well, the story was much more player and world focused, but still had some established lore elements. In the very next expansion, The Burning Crusade, yep. the narrative became much more established lore oriented with its inclusion of the Burning Legion and Illidan Stormrage. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. In Wrath okay. of the Lich King, the Scourge all about Arthas. Arthas stole the show, moving us even more into the established lore. In Cataclysm, the world changed significantly, but was still grounded in established lore. Here we see a okay. slight shift in storytelling. In Miss of Pandaria, the same trend continues as Pandaria was actually established lore, and we have all the old guy stuff as well. Okay, dude. <laughs> okay, dude. Okay. Warlords of Draenor is where things really turn around. Yeah? We drop way down into the player and world-associated storytelling. Into, my opinion, the realm of is unbelievability. Is this a sub-count? This occurs for two interconnected reasons. The first is that the lore went into a totally new direction. As, yep, you guessed it. A totally new timeline was introduced. Great and idea. No established lore behind it. Yeah. The second reason is since we don't have any established lore, someone had to become the center of attention. And that person is you. This is why you are now referred to as the hero in the narrative. The story has no legs to stand on. And in Legion, this got even worse, as everyone and their mother had the damned Ashbringer. This is completely lazy storytelling, in my opinion, and makes the story so unbelievable. And now with BFA, I honestly. So I, I think really the distinction he's trying to draw here because it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. And based off of the question marks in chat, I think that most people feel that way. So he, like the top here, the story mode means that the lore is basically told through, is like, is told through like extra stories, right? Like, so the Lich King, the Illidan, and the player is basically a vehicle of moving that story forward. And at the bottom here in like WAD and Legion, I would completely disagree with this WAD placement personally. I think that everything in WAD was pretty much determined by the NPCs. The NPCs did everything. Uh, the player really had no impact whatsoever. But, um, you know, maybe you could disagree with that. Uh, and, and down here, what he's saying is that this is more things that are driven by players and the storyline being driven by players. So above, this is a storyline being driven by NPCs versus being driven by players. That's the only way that I can really figure out how to make sense out of this they have no idea what they were going for here is the narrative player worlds lore or is it faction based honestly i have no clue but i'll be honest i'm genuinely interested in where they go with the narrative in the future if you're like me i'm sure you've noticed that this trend line eerily simulates the one buzzing around the internet depicting the popularity of wow as a function of subscriber number they were right about the, the <laughs> it is an interesting wide. association to make but just remember guys yeah correlation does not necessarily equal causation obviously if they are linked it would mean that people enjoy good lore driven narratives 
However, these are hard to keep going in the long run. In actuality, the sole reason I made this was to only point out that Vanilla exists in a very unique place on this timeline, with a more player and world related story but still having aspects of established lore peppered in. Okay. It's extremely balanced, and to me this is what makes Vanilla unique. Finally, let's discuss the third point, the subtle unfolding of the lore. I'd like to tackle this point utilizing examples from the questing system, and I'd like to personally thank a friend of the channel, Taladrill, for pointing this one out. Okay, if thank you, Taladrill. If you ever had the pleasure of leveling in the Barrens, then you may remember digging up some insect eggs south of Camp Durajo. No. Silithid eggs, to be exact. No. <laughs> utilizing a special quest item. The quest giver, Corin, a troll in the crossroads, says to you, Eh, Meldoran, I've been sent to the crossroads to watch over the land and take note of its happenings for me masters in Orgrimmar. One object of my studies are the insect-like creatures found in the south of the Field of Giants. He's doing his best, okay? We know okay? little of these creatures, so I've been making it a point to discover more. They seem to have uh, intelligence to him, more so than any normal animal. Take this digging claw, man, and collect some of the creatures' eggs from their mounds. But be careful. If alerted, they will attack you. Okay. I'm really sorry you guys had to suffer through that. Anyway. You did great. When you turn the quest in, he says. Yeah, good effort. You please me, Melderon. The egg's in the tool. Well done. And for your reward. Uh, and that's it. There really isn't any logical follow-up to this quest. However, there are similar quests in Feralis, Tenaris, and Onguro that task you with finding out more about these strange insects. But all of them are exploratory in nature, as the Horde, the Alliance, and even the Goblins are trying to find out what makes the Silithid tick. And if you did these quests before 1.9, no one really knew what the Insectoids were up to. I mentioned this Silithid example for one simple reason. Dude, that's so good. The developers were extremely subtle, building the Encourage content up over a year before its release as a raid tier, utilizing minimal open-ended quests. As the game progressed, these misunderstood curiosities grew into something literally world-changing as the story ultimately led to the Gates of Ankaraj opening event and our first brush as a player base to one of the old gods, Cthulhu. This Holy is an fuck. excellent example of good storytelling and foreshadowing as the Silithid story arc provides an example of how invested the developers were to the story. Not only that, but the quest which seemed unconnected at first spans several zones and tens of levels. That's dedication in design. And this is only one example of great quest engineering. We can say the same for the Morladim quest in Duskwood, the missing diplomat quest line which spans five zones, the stones that bind us in the Swamp of Sorrows and the Blasted Lands, Tyrian forgings in Dreams quest line, and countless others. These quests not only build a living, breathing world, I had never wanted to ever had I'd never had any sort of like inspiration to make a game, right? Ever. The first time that I ever felt like I was really watching or playing a game that I was really like inspired to like, man, maybe I should make video games myself was Dark Souls One. I saw that game, I beat the game and I realized like how good it was. I was like, there's no way I could ever make this game. Like, that this is just incredible. Like, there's no way. Going back and looking at all these things about WoW and all the ways that they did this, and like all these little moving parts, like it, it actually makes me feel like there's a lot of games that I'd be like, yeah, I could make this game, right? And like, obviously I couldn't, but it's like you'd think that you could. Whenever you look at how many pieces in Vanilla WoW, I couldn't even begin to do this. Like, there's no way. I did this is this is incredible. Like, I, 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 I don't know. Like, I mean, it's just insane. Because the difference between a game like this and like Witcher Three, people use that as an example, right, for stories. I think this. Like the story connections and everything occur in the own, in the player's own mind, and it's much more like something that happens internally rather than something externally that you just witness. And that's what I think is really special. They provide such variety in enemies, 
In TBC, we fight the Burning Legion. In Wrath, it's the Scourge. In yep. Kata, it's the Old Gods. In Pandaria, it's the Old Gods again. And we go on and on. But in Vanilla, we are put into a series of complex struggles that contain even more complex stories within them. This complexity provides so much variety and so much lore for the player to experience. For me, these three reasons that I highlighted are why I'm going back to Classic WoW. Holy shit. Because it's where I can truly immerse myself into the Warcraft universe yet again. Yeah. For me, it's where I can forge lasting friendships while embarking on unique adventures. For me, it's where I can experience the love and commitment of the Classic WoW development team through the eyes of my character. I truly hope you'll join me and embark on your own adventures and have your own unique experiences in the greatest gaming environment ever created. I hope to see you in Azeroth, friends. Hey, ladies and gents, I had a lot of fun making this video. Holy it took me a long shit. time to make, and it really took me some time to really think about how I wanted to portray the feelings I had about the Vanilla WoW storytelling, and how it's truly unique There's in the evolution video. of World of Warcraft in general. And I'd like to know what you think. I want to know why Classic WoW was unique to you. So if you have a moment, think about something that really made you Vanilla unique to you, and why you're really eager to go back. Write a comment, and I'd like to see your, your point of views as well. And if you're a retail player that's never experienced Classic WoW before, but just are really eager to give it a shot, take this time to really think about what do you want in the game? Is it just getting the max level and burning through content, or is it to really escape and go into a, a fantasy Holy world, live shit, out vicariously man. through your avatar? But anyway, guys, if you like this video, please leave a like below. And if you enjoy this type of content or are interested in other types of videos we make right. here at Def Camp Melder on TV, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more guides. Def Talk interviews with WoW content creators and enthusiasts, Melderon's classic WoW vlogs, and those Dungeon Diver Let's Plays, which wow. will be coming up soon. Also, join us on Discord right. to be part of the Death Camp Melderon TV community, and follow us on Twitter for video updates and more. Links will be in the description. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our wonderful patrons who make videos like this possible. If you want to help us make better content by supporting us directly, consider becoming a patron. There are a number of rewards that you may be interested in. Guys, as I said, it's like occasionally I'll see something that I just feel like I'm completely outclassed. You know, like I'll see, it's like, okay, I could never do that, right? It's like, this is like, you think about Classic WoW was like the, the pinnacle accomplishment of the collective minds of the top neckbeards in the country. That's what it really was. And what it was, it was it was just a game. It is it was a, it was a lot more than a game for a lot of people and I think that's really what makes it so special. Like I yeah, this was the pinnacle accomplishment, like the apex accomplishment of all neckbeards basically putting their the, their minds together from all the other games. The thing you do most things. Well, I mean like the thing is like there's a certain point that Yes, obviously, it may seem easy, right? But to be able to see something that was done masterfully and be able to understand the mastery and the skill and the technique behind it whenever you're witnessing it, even as an outsider, I don't think it's done in Kruger or anything. I think that's something much bigger than that. And, and to see something like that is just amazing.